Creation, Book of Clarity, Chapter 9 She started to glow. This glow spread to the entirety of the planet. The surface world started to shine brighter than before, the second sun almost blinding with light. Her vibration sped and so did the vibration of the echo. Together, the planet shook with the energy of transmutation. From every hole in the soil and break in the crystalline waves to every shift of rock and ray of the sun, the echo sprouted spirits through the planet. Every single creature that existed on the previous planet before forming into the echo was now reborn as a spirit experiencing itself. They split into groups to live out their existence as spirit of the wind, the crystal, the rock, and the light. She was still connected to all of the echo, even as a spirit. She could feel the excitement resulting from the duality of living both on the surface and just below it. She incarnated on the echo surface as a spirit of the wind. She sprouted from the draft of a leaf being blown in the air. The sensation of being born into a spirit of the wind reminded her of the softness and innocence with which a baby breathed as it slept, blissful and unaware of a dangerous world beyond its eyelids. It reminded her of the wisdom and acceptance that came from blowing out a candle on the 100th birthday of a friend. It was gentle, yet so full of meaning that it made her weep as her spirit formed from the gust of air. She soared into the skies. She was formless, but also a bit thicker than a cloud. She was the color of clay, but if she expanded enough, she couldn't be seen. She had no eyes, but could sense the environment around her in vivid detail. The movement of the vegetation while hunting and the puling of new organisms as the birthing of their species continued. She sensed the other spirits around her, expanding, shrinking, and experiencing themselves too. The light spirits were a fluorescent black that shifted through the prismatic colors from dark to light. They formed from rays of light that reflected off the surface of the crystalline liquids. The rock spirits were a deep green and they sprouted forth from the rumblings of the echo's grounded surface. The crystal spirits were a blue silver and they were birthed from the splashes of liquid displaced from the crystalline lakes and oceans around the echo. She marveled at the various spirits as they roamed the planet, observing their elemental counterparts. The planet they created when their consciousness formed together was beautiful. It was still in its early stages, but to her, it felt like it had already been two lifetimes. Her existence here was nearing its end. She wondered what would happen to her once she returned. She'd be forced to eject, of course, but would she ever be allowed to return? This is her first time exploring herself as a planet. She didn't want to give up the opportunity to be connected in this way. As she basked in the comforting sensation of this new level of connection, there was another energy pulling at her attention. She couldn't quite place it. It didn't belong in the euphoric emotions her and the other spirits were experiencing. And before long she realized, the other spirits felt the feeling too. Slowly, their playful and excited demeanor turned serious. Their curious explorations became suspicious alertness. She recognized the feeling, the uneasiness was back. But in this instance, it didn't return as time or even fear. This was a far more dangerous feeling, almost like doom. She got the feeling they should return back to their interplanetary consciousness. She sent the thought out to the consciousnesses of the other spirits, just like she did while in the Echo. At first, as the proposal flowed through the consciousness of the Echo, an answer didn't return. Nothing did. Her suggestion had been met with silence. She sent it out again. No answer. She took stock of the planet around her. 
The other consciousnesses had been shining brightly and the planet itself had been vibrating just moments before. Somehow, without her realizing it, the world around her had paused. The echo was still shining but everything was frozen. The vibration had stopped, the vegetation was no longer moving. The spirits of the wind, earth, crystals, and light were all suspended, paused in time as if time existed in this realm. But it couldn't be. They had just gotten rid of it, right? She flew through the air, inspecting the planetary inhabitants, wondering why she was the only one still moving. Then the clarity hit. She wasn't supposed to be there, and the echo knew it. As the lingering feeling of doom intensified, a burst of energy emanated from the central orb of the echo. The blast traveled in every direction, reaching every consciousness, every spirit. The energy blast was so strong it ripped each spirit apart cell by cell before melding each consciousness back together as one again. Though their spirit body still floated in paws on the surface, she was no longer connected to a spirit. None of the collective echo consciousnesses were. The blast forced them back into the confines of the planetary surface. Another blast was sent from the center orb of the echo. This time, it expanded to the surface world to impact the energy of every vegetative life form and every species variant on the surface. In an instant, their colors were drained from them. All life, all spirit, all liquid, all solid, all fire was now completely blank. Nothing moved, nothing thought. They were a blank planet floating in space with all life drained from its very surface. This blast reconfigured the echo to an energy of alarming awareness. Stillness. She knew. They knew. A third blast was sent out from the core of the planet. This time, it felt targeted. Instead of flowing in every direction like before, it was sent toward one organism, one consciousness, her. The blast wove its way through each consciousness that made up the echo, splitting them briefly before they formed back together. She saw it coming, but she couldn't dodge it. She couldn't change it. She couldn't avoid it. She was frozen, this time in fear. She knew no matter what she did, it would always find her, across galaxies, across lives, across creations. She sensed as the entire echo unpaused as the consciousnesses turned to watch her. They knew. They did nothing as the blast approached her. There was nothing they could do. The core of the echo had a mission to eliminate human intruders, just as much as most of the rest of the universe did. The blast hit her straight in the center of her consciousness, and the searing light emanating from it wrapped itself around every bit of her being. With the sheer strength from the attack, she was forcefully torn from the rest of the planet. Her spirit of the wind form in the external world dissipated and fell like ash to the ground. Apparently, being eaten had been the least of her worry. The blast pierced her consciousness. She knew. She was the danger. She was the feeling of doom, the unease, the fear. They all knew it had emanated from her. She wasn't supposed to be there. She wasn't supposed to be part of the planet. She was not a pure consciousness. She was still human. The blast began to incinerate her consciousness. She felt every bit of it. Her ejection from her human body into the astral world expanded her ability to feel. The pain was non-human. It would crush anyone who had the misfortune of embracing the blast within seconds. She was no different. As the blast pierced through the center of her consciousness, she began to burst apart. 
In all the stories she heard, in all the cautions that were hinted at, she was never warned about this possibility. The planet she was once so connected to, so comfortable with, was now attacking her like she was a virus, and she was powerless against it. Hello, this is Michaela Simone Mack, author of Creation, narrator of Book of Clarity. We are nearing the end of this story, and I'm so excited to share the ending with you next week. Again, new episodes every Friday, and creation will continue even after Book of Clarity is over. Thank you so much for your support. Please continue to listen, please share, please subscribe, and please comment and let me know what you think. Thank you so much, and I'll see you for the finale next week. Bye-bye.